Hello there, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO, The Last Days of Europe, which we're playing as a beautiful Tomsk or CSR. So, I do want to preface this uh, episode by saying that, even though I asked you guys yesterday about, like, or in the last episode, which nation in Russia, or which warlord you think would be the absolute worst, I will respond to that in the next episode, just because this is a little bit of pre-recorded and I couldn't gather our comments at one time because I'm a little busy at the time of this recording. Regardless, let's begin. Operation De Antilles. So Marshal Shapshnikov, in his role chief of the Republic's armies, stood in a crowded room. Tom's top brass, as well as a few high-ranking civilians, had been assembled to discuss the final steps and the preparation or the prepared invasion of the Federation of Novosibirsk and Altai. Between Tomsk and its target today stood a mixture of plains and woodland. Greatest obstacle of all would be the Ob River. The city of Novosibirsk itself was exposed on the right flank of the river, but any commander worth their salt would keep large reserves west of the river, ready to attempt to relieve any besieged city. An important secondary target was the Altai region and its capital, Barnal. At the time, or at the moment, the southern part of the Novosibirsk Altai Federation. Barnal and its surroundings have become some of the best farmland of the Central Siberian Republic, as well as a crucial railway junction. Recapturing would be a great morale coup, and uh, perhaps fatally weaken the opposition. Some general droned on, expl drone on explanation to an envoy from the Ministry of War. Shapshnikov tried to pay attention. His heart wasn't in it. He had served with Polkrishkin, Novosibirsk's strongman. The enemy officers were damn traitors, and yet they were also a gosh darn fine commanders. Neither the city of Novosibirsk nor the plains of Altai would be ceded easily. Over land and in the skies, the Siberian Falcon and its associates would wage a determined opposition. Yet they must fall if the Republic is to live, in which we are uh, still uh, still okay here. Uh, authority? Eh, we need authority so we can get some more popularity, but that's okay. 29% still not bad. Uh, we're still going to get some more support when effect removed. That's fine. We are 29% point zero. We're going to lower this out. We're getting funding agricultural methods. This is looking nice. And we're doing war plan de Antles. De Antles. Cool. Regardless, for nine days, we'll lose political power, get more army XP gain, and war support. When removed, we go to war with Novosibirsk. And hopefully, we can smash the living garbage out of them. It'll be a lot of fun. Cool. And we got less than a week now, which is good. Anything else that we really need to keep an eye on? No. We've got to keep an eye on this so we can get some more support, in which we are 29%. Huh. It said when effect when removed, you get more support. Oh, oh, maybe it's over here. Ah, there we go. A lot more pink. 39, 20, 32, 45, or 49, I mean. 45, oh, actually, 45 right there. That's not bad. Over here, 30% versus 35% versus 30 versus something else. Cool. Welcome to Dolin, Dolina Nochi. A surprising new radio cereal, cereal has been developed by a collective of Bastard producers in the town of Strzhev, Strzhevoy, entitled Welcome to Dolina, Dolina Nochi. It has become one of the most divisive entertainment products to have come over our airways in recent years. The cereal is set in the small town of Dolina Nochi, a former mill town on the Ob River, which is now centered around a bicycle factory. It follows the daily going-ons of the town's inhabitants. Boris the foreman, Daria the schoolteacher, Alionia and Artum, the factory workers, and so on. However, Dolina Nochi is much stranger than appearances might initially imply. The cereal depicts it as almost existing in a bubble, seemingly free from Russia's divisions and turmoil. Moreover, the townsfolk seem to be constantly afflicted by supernatural occurrences. A vast glowing cloud appears above the kindergarten before becoming the principal. A five-headed dragon is arrested by the local police for committing fraud, and a strange force on the outskirts of town begins whispering to residents to join it. The absurdism of Welcome to Dol Dolina Nochi is contrasted against the seemingly repetitive nature of its plots, which are unnervingly normal given the circumstances. This has made the serial especially controversial as the show constantly veers between mind-numbing boredom and surreal horror, some decried as bizarre and meaningless, while devoted fans gather in cafes to compare notes and share theories. One particularly noteworthy bit of speculation is that the entire town exists in a time loop. Others say it's all a dream, or perhaps the town is located in the American Southwest, or perhaps all three. With Welcome to Dolina Nochi, nobody really knows. There's a thin se se semantic line separating weird and beautiful, and that line is covered in jellyfish. What? Very odd, very, very, very odd. I'm joining with my cat Binky, who's having quite a good time. And, uh, ooh, and a cat wanting to come into my room too. Uh, anything else? And we're about to go to war. Get, we'll get an authority, but we're kind of okay. What? Two days. Two days left. Okay, give me just one moment, please. My apologies. My bad. And we have gone to war with these gosh darn Nova Sibirsk people. The flag of Siberia, they have 5 to 7. We have more divisions than them, which is good. My goal is to get the capital immediately. And maybe we can cut these guys off and cut them in half like that. If you can, you're going to go to there to there to capture all victory points and do that. If you can move fast enough, 
we can get to Barnall as well. Maybe. I'm going to have you guys come over to the river and then maybe attack them from behind. Oh, they started doing that. Are you kidding me? So be it. Come there then. We might get encircled, so that means you got to hold them there. you got to hold them there. I'm going to focus on cutting these guys off first. Make it easy on us. Come on, come on. Good. Kill that division off first. If we can, that'd be great. What's going on up here? Not much. Go and do that. Go, 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 go. We're going to do this. Oh, they actually have I... Ooh, that's not good. They actually have IFVs, huh? Well, as long as they're not moving, we should do okay. The con cannot continue. Oh, look at that. Strike fast. More speed and organization. Ooh, bonus for land doctrine. Protect the industry. Eh, that's okay. Crush the regiments. More division attack. A little bit of shock and awe. That's, not, that's actually not bad. We gain base war support. Actually, that's pretty good. I want to do that one. We might... And we've got nothing else up here. Not bad. Even we, we should really save for political power. But getting more war support would be probably a pretty good idea right now. Good. We killed them off. Awesome. Come down here and surround Novosibirsk. You are going to go here, here, here. Just take as much as you possibly can. With the motorized here, we should be able to circle these guys pretty darn easily. Ah, uh, motorized. I usually don't use them too much, but they're pretty good. Pretty good. Go and do that too. There you go. Oh, we found some enemies who want to encircle us. Okay. Uh, go right there first. Encircle the capital from every and cut it off from everyone else. Oh, they wanted to move, as I see. You guys hold for now. We can't quite beat their motorized, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. Things happen. Ah, they're attacking us here too. Good, good. Beat them up. We cut off the capital. Take the capital. Take it, take it from them. Give them nothing. Take everything away from them. Nice. Cool. Come on. Four divisions. Hey! Novosibirsk aircraft plant captured. The recent fall of Novosibirsk and the retreat of enemy forces across the frontiers of the battlefield have lost us in control of the now idle Novosibirsk aircraft plant. Towering and dormant, the factory was constructed before the Great Patriotic War and has manufactured vehicles capable of flight for her administrators ever since. Now with the plant under our control, we will soon have access to a fresh arsenal of aircraft fit for any purpose for our armies. Motor engines roar, and squadrons of planes may fly in the Siberian skies bearing our insignia. To first dominate the planes and waste of central Siberia by land, we must tame the wild airs of our broken Russia. With this plant, the future may be ours for centuries to come. Cool. Awesome, 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 awesome stuff, my friends. Uh, go right there. Keep pushing in. Barnal is now the capital city, which we're going to cut these guys off and surround them and destroy them that way. Which will be good. Go, motorized, go. Don't even worry about that. Just take all the land you possibly can. What matters is grabbing that land. Tartarsk. Good. And then we're going to come up here and start smashing these IFBs, which we won't be able to pierce. A, 0 0.08 billion. Oh, never mind. We don't have to smash them. They're dead. Now, it is time for a fun time right here. My friends, we have won the battle. We're going to immediately pro get a pro-humanist campaign, because we got to get more popularity. So, And then we'll integrate Novosibirsk. We'll get more manpower that way, too. We're just barely ahead. Oof. Cool. Very cool. 2.47 skill. Oh, we gotta do that scavenge for loot. Scavenge for loot. Oh. Oh, this group, huh? How strong is this group? Kazakhs. Oh, well, led by Sabit Mukhanov. 16,000. Five divisions. They don't seem too strong. I suppose we could... Oh, Siberian Black Army. Let's either them or the Siberian Black Army. Either one of those two. Let's see. Ultra nationalism. I forgot about Liga. Yazov. Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to fight Yazov. The Black Army's we got to fight up. Fight to the death. Um, Black League. Not Army, but League. Go ahead and do that. That'd be fine. Oh, air bases. Oh, we can add... Hmm. Try the, try the Secessionists. That'd be good. Do that eventually, yeah. Go and... Uh, mm, I want to do that. We're going to get this first, so... I want to get this done. We're going to lure our stability, too, huh? That's not quite ideal, but hey, we got 0 .08 billion. Not bad. Very good. I'm glad I did this one first, though. That's good. Pro human support. Open district maps. We have three, and we almost have four when we can integrate them into our little popular group here. Very cool. And let's go and grab some more loot. And initiate raid. Are you guys ready to go? Looks like for the most part, you mostly are. Let's do this first. And then boom. Getting more fuel? Good, good, good. Oh, actually, wait, after... Oh, my goodness. 36 factories. I didn't realize that we had that many. Actually, I think I put some more on. They refuse tribute, so be it. Border war. Oh, we're making some military factories now, which is nice. Oh, yeah. Very successful. We already read this pretty much, so... Seize all that we can use. 
If that's the case, going to artillery. We still need a little bit more artillery. I think they're doing pretty darn well. If that's the case, I do would like I would like to invest a little bit more in that. Basic anti tank. You can do one more there. I want to get at least a few more guns. And motorized is doing okay. Very nice. Good job, guys. If that's the case, come back down here. Maybe we can raid these guys next. Maybe or we'll do those guys down there. We'll see what happens. Because last time, this was the war. Uh, let's see. I mean, we kind of already read this last time. The balance of power has clearly shifted in our favor. With each skirmish to come, we are better armed to tackle these challenges that encroach across the wild Russian frontiers. Stability, war support, and get some early rifles. Which, you know, they're okay. They're not great. They're only early rifles, but whatever. Uh, Brotherhood declared one the Bereznitsky... Bereznitsky Governet. Okay, well, whatever. Cool. And for these guys... Ooh, recon. Logistics might not be bad. Ooh, we could get... So this gives you one. 1.5. 1 two. Or 1.5. That does give you a little bit, quite a bit of armor. It's almost 36 armor. That ain't bad. I doubt we could actually really do that, but we'll see what happens. Ooh. Uh, we need greater than 10 authority. 5.6. Hey, 29.4 though. Hey, that's not bad. That is not bad. That actually went up for us, which is really awesome. When you can, train. That'd be good. Not bad. We need more support though. Always need to get more support. So, we can't do that, which sucks. So, we gotta wait to do the campaign again. We currently have 5.6, so we should get that relatively soon ish. Uh, let's see, scams for loot, and we shall do. Equipment. As we research facilities. Why not? And trial the secessionists? Yes, we might as well do that too. We can do that, but for two air bases, that's not really worth it. We'll do it eventually, though. That's fine with me. Just kind of waiting to get some more here. And we almost have a core on Novo Sibiris, which would be a great, great thing. So the last group that we got to take out is which? That is a very good question to ask. The last group... Those are raids. Uh, oh, the last couple groups. Envoys... Oh, Orosia. This group down here would be easy to take out. These guys, the Siberian Black Army, which should be relatively okay to take out since we have now 10 divisions. And then People's Revolutionary Council, which will be a little bit more difficult, but it won't be so difficult once we take out the Siberian Black Army, which will be fine. we got just got to spend a little bit more time here. Military factor construction speed. This is 1970. That's a little bit too ahead of time. And we still have only two. We're still doing one for weapons. Oh, we actually have better artillery already. That's not bad. How about some light aircraft? Jet engines? Why not? J jet engines are nice. I, want, I, I, I just want to raid more. I just want to be a raider. Raid, 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 raid. So, I think... Let's see. So, our plan... Like I see the Siberian plan. I'm just letting time go on. Richard, Nixon, no, Nixon, why'd you resign? We need more growth. Production efficiency growth. Growth will go up. We can lower this. Go ahead and do this. It's fine. Can, can you hold the nation together? I have a good feeling. No spoilers. No spoilers here. I have a good feeling he probably won't be able to wink wink nudge nudge we'll see where everyone ends up hmm <laughs> I'm so sorry Kennedy oh look at that manpower though holy crudderinos that's a lot that is quite a bit oh we're doing much better on artillery which is nice gun wise we're doing okay as well and nothing yet for what we really need cool nice very nice and this content is still only 12, so I'm not worried about that at all. Let's see. Actually, what are these like right now? Minus 25%. That's okay, you know. Let's see, construction speed. Oh, I want more construction speed. And anything else here? Not really. I could get more stability, but that's okay. That's construction speed. Yeah, I'm going to go and do that. And then we're going to raise our consumer goods again. Because, why not? <laughs> oh, there we go. Consolidate. Of course, as soon as I do the other one, now we can consolidate humanist rule. What a shame. What a shame. But, hey, the map. Oh, this should be done hopefully soon enough. The end of the Federates. The man who had begun the downfall of the Central Siberian Republic and the man who put it in its final nails. The trial of Vasily Shushkin. Shukshin. Alexander Polkrishkin. And all their associates of the Federation of Novosibirsk and Altai saw the packed courtrooms. The Federates have been the most powerful breakaway faction of the Republic, and now their defeat have brought back to the fall the pain of the secession all those years ago. Both of the main defendants appeared unrepentant before the court. Vasily Shushkin. Shukshin decried the difficult condition in Altai region, where peasants were overworked to feed the, the whole of the CSR. Had it not been their right to march for the rights, when accused of leading violence against the central government, Shukshin retorted that the Republican army had been sent in to crush protests violently, forcing the citizens to arm themselves. Likewise, 
Pokrushkin was unmoved by the prosecution's accusation. Same traitor, as a military officer, he had always known his duty to the common man. When the stalemate war against Yagoda's Red Army remnants had pushed the CSR to the famine, had the people not been right to call for peace? Had their desperate pleas deserved to be drowned under the crackle of gunfire? Their arguments failed away to sway either the crowd or the judge. As military officers and as regional politicians, the accused failed to restore common order in their jurisdiction. Instead, they invited the specter of war, civil war, plunge central Siberia into chaos. Unrepentant, these so-called federates proceeded to build a corrupt autocratic regime. No doubt these federates had their way. Russian democracy would be buried, its corpse used to fertilize corp corrupt private interests. For this, the court condemns the accused and will seek sentences of life in prison where the accused will have time to reflect on their crimes. Justice prevails. Cool. Oh my goodness, 27.8. Are you kidding me? Yeah, we got oh, Nova Sibirskin here, 23%, but oh my goodness. Oh no, 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 no. I mean, we are technically in third place now. Wow, that sucks. Uh, why? Why must you pain me like this? Oof. But luckily we still get like 2.5, 2.4 political power days. So that's pretty, still pretty good. Um, anything else here? We gotta wait to do... Oh, wait. Can we do this? No. We can't do this yet. Oh, never mind. We can. Um. Hold on. Did I, oh, maybe I did not tell him to move. Don't stop training. I would like to get rid of these guys next, please. So we have Black Army. Oh, wait. We can't go to war with those guys. Oh. Is that going... Well, hmm. I want to save these guys, because they don't like, they don't seem that strong, but I guess we'll do them next. Cool. Operation Volznesenya. I have no idea how to speak Russian. I'm just contemplating or pretending like I know. Cool. Now get everyone here because we should be able to just bum rush them. So, uh, the central government has come around to ask for the military plan to deal with a rogue Orosian territory. Shepshnikov had hoped things would never come to this. It also prepared just a set of invasion plans, namely Operation Volznesenya. The Marshal of the Republic knew the civilian government had it, has little to appetite for violence against remote secessions. Who knew how things would turn out in this era of strife and conflict? The military side of things was quite simple. Beyond the problem posed by high altitude flying, or fighting, Orosia's population was and had been extremely low. Even with the influx of displaced old believers from Western Russia, the tiny nation would struggle to field more than a few regiments of regular infantry. Beyond discussion of sieging points for the invasion and a schedule aimed to acclimatize troops to mount air, the military plan mostly discussed cultural issues tied to the occupation and how the best avoid making the locals feel as though their way of life is threatened. The region had long been poor and semi-autonomous from the central Siberian government. Local Bukharanists, follower of a Turkic faith, had complained to the government about the arrival of thousands of old believers... Oh, Mexico's on fire. Or just elected a president. Uh, old believer refugees from the West. The ever marginalized Christian group had apparently decided on settling in a remote location for their own safety. Local tensions had been an issue, but not a critical one. The province had become separated from Tomsk and the collapse of the of HTE Republic, or the Republic, and had sought neutrality and isolation in the following years. Zavaloko, president of the tiny nation, was not a bad man. If guarantees were made that his people would be left free to worship however they choose, Shapshnikov knew that violence could be avoided. Let's hope diplomacy C succeeds. Well, we'll see what happens. And we still gotta save up for this, so. It is an unfortunate pot that we must do. But hey, at least all these nations are kind of together. Now, isn't there a plan to, like, I forget, to unite different places? Like Tomsk and Novosibirsk and some other nation, like, not nation, but city, like Komarovo? I forget. Guys, please get down there quickly. More quickly. Uh, you have two weeks, so look at their hopefully in time, but we'll see. And what happened? Did someone in the German Civil War die? Oh, there goes Kennedy. It just takes a second to die. Unfortunate. Ooh, Supreme Soviet, a presidium of the Supreme Soviet declared war on them. Cool. Uh, the people are dying, so be it. Whatever. It happens. Happens from time to time. Gorky Liberation Committee for the Liberation of Peoples of Russia declared war on the Gorky Brigade. So, when removed, greatly increases human salon authority. So, hopefully we get more than 5.6%. So then, we can do human support in the lower house. So that would be very, very good. Hmm... How's this looking? No negatives, minus 22%, so we gotta get more consumer goods now. I think that'd be for the best. Yeah, that's not bad. APCs, I'm gonna start putting some APCs maybe in the motorized. Maybe? We have not making any IFBs, which is fine. I don't want to use IFBs, I don't like them. Main battle tanks. Oh, reintegration of Orosia. Oh, okay! 
Today, cheering citizens have greeted the arrival of Orochi as representatives into the capital. The envoys were a pair, an old believer priest and a Vulcanist elder. Both were driven to the presidential palace, where a great ceremony was beheld for the peaceful reunion of the Republic with its wayward problems. In Gorno Altaisk, little had seemingly changed. President Zavoloko had resigned, letting a new provincial governor be appointed by Tomsk. A list of good candidates had been prepared. A suggestion of choosing a man from each religious community had been put forward. In the hills among the mountains of Altai, the two communities continued to live and continued to pray. Slowly, the old resident grew accustomed to the new neighbors. This process would only continue as Orochio took back its place within a new republic. The only difference was that, hopefully, war would not visit the autonomous province in a foreseeable future. In the new republic, Zavoloko had hopefully found a protector and a friend that would let the Bukharanists and old believers live, finally live in peace. Welcome home, citizens. Okay! Uh, we actually didn't have to go to war for that one. That's awesome. And we're just, we got enough political power, we might as well just integrate them now. Great! Okay! Siberian Black League or these people. Okay, so we gotta keep an eye on this. Who is winning the war against each other? Siberian Kamacha, Vyatka Order War, Samara Gorky, uh, Siberian Black League is right there. It's Black Army Russian War. 12,000, 5,000. You guys have more divisions. Siberian Black League. I guess we'll go to war the, them next. That'd probably be good. Let's that time go on. That was actually really awesome that we actually have to go to war. That is, in my mind, a little unusual. But you know what? It's a little wholesome. A little bit wholesome. Which is great. Mmm. -hmm. Now, do we have enough artillery to throw on here? That should be good now. We can throw some recon on there. I want to make more tanks. Actually, how much would it take for us to put tanks as recon on our divisions? How much would that take? Minus 106. That's a bit too little that we have. Over here, though, I want to throw on some motorized artillery. Even though I do want to throw on APCs eventually. Hmm, motorized artillery. I mean, that could be good. You get 18. Let's see. You get 40 more soft attack if you do that. 40 more soft attack, and 8 more breakthrough, or you throw on this for 19 more breakthrough, and still get 10 more soft attack, and you get more organization HP, you lose organization, um, I'm just gonna throw on APCs, there you go. It gives them just a wee bit of armor, enemies might not be able to pierce them, they're still pretty speedy, and people are dying all over the place. So be it, whatever. Cool. 76% war support, not bad. Ooh, scavenger loot, yes please. I can't get that yet because we have four days left, which is fine. And who can I beat up? Can I please beat up somebody? Oh, the Divine Mandate against of Siberia. Oh. Five to seven. They've won and a lot of light infantry. Well, then. Divine Mandate. Amalon, maybe. Let's see what happens. Let's get our guys moving around. Uh, we're using those APCs in those motorized divisions. Maybe not be, might not be a bad idea, actually. Your 18 combat with. What if I threw on one more? Would that lower our APCs? We would have five left. And enough equipment to do okay. And 18.4 armor. So if, unless they have anti-tank, they'll probably struggle against us, which is a great thing. Uh, more, two weeks left. And let's see. We got to declare one of the Iron Brothers. 11.2, not bad. Let's go ahead and ask for human support in the lower house. Decreases our authority, but greatly increases stuff here. We just lost almost 10%. Roughly 10%. Probably more like 9%. Wow, that sucks. That really, really sucks. Man, Noble Sobiersk, you gotta get more purplish. Oof. Six days left. We can go. We can initiate the raid whenever we want to. I just wanna wait for everyone else. Oh! Bowman is beating up Gall Ring. Go ahead. See what you can do. A little bit of lag. A little bit of lag. What's going on? We're good to go. Are they going to give in? They refuse tribute? No, they do not want to do that. Now, we're not fighting any of them. Timofey, Yelkov. Great! Borman wins a German Civil War. Wait, hold on. You beat him up? Oh, okay, that was really fast. All, all I saw was you beat up Goring, and that was it. Holy crap. Maybe Goring capitulated everyone else. It, this, Moscow looks so bad. This area looks so bad. Holy cow. My goodness. Rebby Bink. Joined with my cat, Binky. Having a good time on uh, my uh, other chair. And food for the hungry. Along with us, everyone finally has food for the night, and we need no longer work on empty bellies and broken hearts. Living off half rations for months has taught us that all 10% composure, but not in our minds in a silent and icy hysteria. Now we have plenty of food for generations to come, and the people of Tom's can begin their toils without hunger, bothering them throughout their maddening, tiresome days. Cool. Get more political power. And we didn't really have to do that or read that just because, uh... Oh, we can only raid against these guys. I already read that earlier in the last episode, so... 24.4. So we got to remember, 24.4, and then we're going to get some more lower house support. 24.4. All right, so next up, it's, it's going to be, a, be the Black Army. Now, the Field Marshal, probably already using you. I don't know why they keep switching him over. 
I really don't understand it. Yes. Why are you there? What the heck? No, you go back. You go back there. What the heck? Let time go on, because we might as well. It's weird not reading focuses. It is kind of weird, but that's okay. An ultimatum. Oh, from the Vine Menid of Siberia. Okay. Uh, well, I guess everyone come back here. Everyone really just hold, I guess. Uh, they have demanded that we hand over a tribute of loot, or else they will raid us and take it away from us. We just did that against you. What the heck? Um, okay, we are at impasse to decide. Do we decide to engage in confrontation with the Divine Mandate of Siberia, possibly risking our men dying at the hands of our enemies, or do we instead stand down and cave into their demands, giving them the desired loot, allowing our men to, live to fight another day? Uh, bruh. I, I, we just did that. We just did that. Neutral, neutral state of Vologda. Vol Look at what neutrality gives you. Not much. How many more days do we have with this? Um, not bad. 24.4. Wait, how many more days? We got five days. Well. Good luck, guys. Yeah, seriously, good luck. You're attacking with... We're attacking a couple divisions that are not there yet. That's fine. And the APTs are showing up and they can't pierce me. We defeated them. Cool. We've already read this before, so... Great. Thanks for the political power, guys. I, I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> and you are a trickster. Well, let's get rid of you guys. There you go. And let's do this again. Come on down here. We got plenty of political power now. Love it. Oh, we can do another pro-humanist campaign. Nice. Has not interacted. Cool. I guess we got the political power port. Wait. Oh, wait. Wait, what? Wait, why can we do this again? Increases his humanist popularity in a random district. Okay, well, whatever. 2.8. That's so sad. It looks like this thing, the Novos of Bearsk is changing around maybe a little bit. I don't know. My mind's slipping, I think. That's okay. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we gotta beat up the Siberian Black Army next. And let's go get some new workers. I love the workers. And good war with them, hopefully soon. Let's go ahead and get some more consumer goods. Thank you very much. Free military factories. Oh, don't mind if we do. We got plenty of artillery now. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that we... Oh, oh I wanted tactical bombers, not cast, but okay. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit more APCs. I'm feeling it a little bit more. And then we want some more planes, of course. A little more APCs, a few more tanks here and there. Uh, do that maybe first. We'll see what happens. Nice. Very nice. So we got that. We lowered what? What did we lower? I forget what we lowered. Uh, consumer goods goes up a little bit more. It's only 12, so it's not too bad. Consumer goods. Siberian so Black League. Okay, cool. I didn't think they would actually win any war, but whatever. Let's see. Increases factor input gains. I want more construction speed. But I don't think we have that yet. No, that lowers construction speed by a little bit. Industrial capacity. Mm hmm. Capacity. Oh, we got something else here. Worker concessions, production quotas. Oh, there it is. It just popped up. Cool. Let's grab that. Do you have anything else up here? Pro humanist campaign is getting done. Very nice. 43.6. Well, it's a good thing it doesn't really matter too much. Oof. We could build up the air bases, but meh. Alright, so let's take a look at this. Oh, there goes with Slovakia. Construction speed is very nice. Nice. Keep building yourselves up. Yeah, so far, not too bad. The only thing I'm worried about is that we won't win the next war. Or win, not the war, but the election for us. That's the biggest thing I'm worried about. More output. Maximum efficiency? Yes, please. Because then we'll get the next one after that, too. Look, look at that. Just two more divisions? Why not? Go and train, guys. You're going to do great. Uh, they go... Oh, Vyadka. No, Vyadka. My Vyadka. No. I got to save up political power, though. And then we're going to do this one next. Because I don't want any negatives here. Yeah. Minus 27% is not bad. Not bad. Once we get a GDP, or, you know, we can actually focus on that. Won't be too bad. Oh... Oh, the Olympics come to the end. Okay. Peace conference is over. Calculating effects. And I don't think Slovakia could hold up for too long. Go on, comment or anything. There we go. I was wondering what happened to the uh, music there. <sighs> Scavenge for weapons? I, mean, I guess we could, but meh. Can we do this yet? No. Can I raid people? I want. I just want to raid people. Oh, we could, technically. But they don't have any money. Or treasure, I should say. We got it kind of thick. I like it. Oh, we can go to war now, these guys. Cool. 
So let's before we do that, let's double check this one more time. Wow, a lot of stars to David. Uh, Black Army, so eight thousand, fifteen thousand, six to ten. Oh, they've they've almost no, like no army. So we'll get, we we have to do the side next. Yeah. Operation Tevordia Ruka. Shapshnikov nursed a cup of bad coffee as his or his aide ran back and forth in the war ministry. Any moment now, President Dmitry Shostakovich was expected to call and give Operation Tevordia Ruka his official approval. The operation. Mostly recycled plans from the initial attempt by the CSR to crush the anarchist uprising all those years ago. It had not been a bad plan, a rapid push to cut in half the territory occupied by anarchist rebels, and they siege to the capital of Kansk, where the Siberian Black Army's main headquarters could be found. Krylov's initial push had come close to doing the job. Andreev's betrayal had ensured that there would be no follow-up of offenses, and the Black Army's success in routing Krylov's heavy guns from the outskirts of Kansk. The final death nil, or the final death of the CSR, was determined. The anarchists had fought hard and they fought well, but this time they would not face an exhausted Republican army. Information sources on the SBA were hard to come by. The Republic's intelligence agency still had not determined how exactly the initial revolt had been sparked, nor had it figured out who among the SBA leaders, Stepanov and Krasnopevsky, Sev, really spoke for the army and its men. Shevchenkov hoped in battle the truth would become clear, that the Republic would finally understand its foe enough to destroy a phone call. Even before answering, the marshal knew it was time. It was time to do what had to be done. Oh, we got that one done again. Do we get any more support here, please? Please? Uh, it's not too much more support. Oh, it's not looking good. Cool. Very good. Nice. 20. Uh, I got 46 point there. 47 and a half. Uh, 40 percent Decemberus. It's all over the place for us. This is not looking good for us at all. Uh oh. Oh boy. Oh, let's get him loot too. Cool. Uh, maybe stop training then? Yeah, that, that, mm. Just go ahead, because they're too busy to do stuff there. I would really like it if these guys could beat up the Revolutionary Council first. They could maybe still win before we go to war, but, eh, I doubt it. Oh, there it goes. Lower house. Oh, goodness. We need more authority, though. Ah, <sighs> big sadness. Big sadness. So we gotta save up political power for a little, a little bit, especially once we take these guys out. Uh, how much more APC do we have? 85. That's not enough. We will, we will need more, and we got a war. Hey, yes, they actually won right before. Uh, we declared war. Siberian Black we declared war in your old military district. Very cool. Very cool. Are you guys moving in or not? Take take the capital. Okay, that's not good. If you don't move, we ain't gonna win. I assume that's the next one. Get the capital. Go 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 before they can do anything about it. They have six to ten divisions. We have more. We might have more than double, or I might mean, have double. We have way more factories. We got some jet engines. Hello. <laughs> Get some basic jet fighters. That'd be nice. It is 64. So it's almost 65. So we gotta start focusing on industry a little bit more soon. Hey, they got divisions down here too. Basic motorized equipment. Good. Very, very good. What if we grab some support weapon for though? More breakthrough for infantry. Yes, please sign me up for that good stuff. Yes. So we have 91. I think we can hold off on this for a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. Coming off of Russia. Scavenge for loot. Okay, we all we have to do is take the capital. And we can finally do our next focus for the Commonwealth. Shostakovich and the Humanist Association has come far from a fringe artistic political movement in an obscure city in central Siberia. He now helms what is likely to be the best hope for the democratic Russia. The government, which he presided over, has transformed the life in Tomsk, ensuring that the basic needs become not only a necessity but a right. People come to Tomsk in search for something better, a shining lantern in the darkness that parades Russia, yet there's much more to be done. The Humanists might have lifted the city of Tomsk into the heart of central Siberia, but enemies still lie in wait. The anarchists and the rebel generals still rule the lands to the south each flaunting the rights as a successor to the CSR. Shostakovich cannot allow this insolence to stand for long. After that, however, the idea of the Commonwealth remains. A state ruled by Russians, not based on class or ideological differences, but of the common bond of the human condition. Stability and war support for all. Or enough. Uh, ooh. Tuva. We gotta get buff. I'm gonna go do Tuva. Hmm. Uh, definitely this one first. Because I wanna... Mm, I wanna save that stuff, but, you know, do, do both. Screw it, do both. Getting some loot. Put down Anarchy. End of the revolt. Yes. Fate of the Reds, from Reds to Republicans? Okay, sure, why not? And I want to keep doing this, but I don't know. Once we, we become, like, big, normal, like, Central Siberia, we might not be able to affect this anymore, so... Gotta keep an eye on that. Fate of the Reds, please, 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 please. I just want to do Fate of the Reds, please. Military expansion, normal stuff. Oslin. Ah, for the Commonwealth. Great. 
So it gives us a little bit more political power. And then we will do reunification of Russia, which we can do. We do get a research slot. We get Orbex administration. We become the Commonwealth of Siberia. I do need to save this, save up for that just a little bit more. I want to do some more stuff, but screw it. We're going to do this. This is my first campaign with the central s legacy of the uh, Siberian plan, so it's looking pretty good overall. We have no D boss, it looks like, so let's go ahead and read this first. Oh, my goodness. Because I do want that extra research slot. Human support in a random district. Well, the elections aren't here yet, so we can wait, maybe wait. Uh, we can wait on that a different path. Approaching the humans. Potential friends. Diplomatic education. Potential enemies. Through cafe. Central Asian overtures. Towards our destiny. Let's go expanding the core. During the unification wars, our military wasn't as powerful as our neighbors. The fight against the separatists and the rogue generals was made difficult by our military. It's been a rough start for our Republican army, but one that must be addressed if we are to defend the territory we have conquered and continue expanding. Our military deficiencies are many, and there isn't any simple fix that will rectify it. The military as a whole must be strengthened. Marshal Shapshnikov has put forward a set of recommendations, on which all salons have been agreed upon. Such improvements will be expensive and time-consuming, but necessary if we wish to one day reunite Russia. Cool. Uh, you know what? Just go ahead and inform the Commonwealth of Siberia. Central Siberian Republic will be known as the Commonwealth. Tomsk unites Central Siberia. Warlord recruitment is gone. At least it's a democracy. Little is known about the political factions. <sighs> yes. It is a group of artists that wish for a humane and democratic republic which protects its citizens. The exact dream has apparently been achieved. At least it's a democracy. Commonwealth. Oh, no, no, no. What is this? Oh, uh, what is this? Oh, we need more political power to console it. God dang it. Oh, hold on. Let's see. 24.6, 2.8. That's so sad. No purple up there, which is kind of not good. We still have the same amount of seats, which is okay for now. But the cynicism debate, which we'll read after we get some of this. Okay, it's almost 65. Just going to do some 62 stuff for infantry weapon group at 6. That'd be cool. Oh, we changed our flag. Look at that. Very nice. So, the Republic has survived and now is thriving under the guidance of Pasternak's constitution. However, the great poet's final gift is not universally loved, especially among recaptured territories. Independent politicians struggle to win power outside the great salons. Many citizens in the provinces believe the system is meant to cynically maintain the dominance of the Tomsk elite at the expense of everyone else. We must remain vigilant and show that our four vanguard political associations are true to their ideals and welcoming of any newcomer. Failure to do so could result in rising cynicism or in the rise of independent politicians. Let's uncheck both issues could cause the failure of a revolutionary diplomatic experience. Oh. It's about balance. Idealism is greater than 60%. Political integration. No political outsiders. To 31%. Oh, goodness. Managing development. The old, old CSR has been reestablished as Russia emerges out of its slumber. The basis of a true modern nation state can be built. The great question is, what of type of society should the Republic shape up to be? More importantly, each, should each salon be true to its own vision? Each salon has had different ideas about developing the army, the political system, and the economy. The citizens expect every salon to follow up on their electoral promises. In the event of a saloon losing power to another salon, the citizens would be disappointed to see the new government merely maintain the previous administration's policies. While the cost of scraping months or years of reform in one era could be great, the cost of cynically failing to follow one's ideas could be even greater. This is organized. We're in a political crisis. We have a basic army. We can close this for now. Regional integration. That we don't need to really see that because we'll, we'll do fine with that. Regional development. Oh, no, we lost Legacy of the Siberian Plan. So we do lose it once you do become this. So Legacy of the Great Unification. The CSR was back from the break. Every last one of the misguided separatists have been crushed, and then the subsequent Siberian workers' revolt sadly had to be crushed as well. The workers are returning to their factories, and citizens of the other of the other central Siberian factions are not yet in open revolt, but tensions are probably high, as of now. The rather overextended republic is still functional. Gradual progress is being made with the central Siberian plan, although the industrialization project will of course have to be expanded to the entirety of the region. The government has at least a semblance of legitimacy and loose authority over its people, but will have to tread very carefully if it wants to earn the trust of its people and develop into a fully-fledged nation-state, not to mention reunify the entirety of Russia, in the cafes, homes, bars, and factories. The People question openly uh, to each other whether Pasternak's great constitution and our salons are truly as idealistic as the people as they claim to be. There is a great risk of our citizens becoming cynics, whose apathy could single-handedly be our republic's downfall. Some may become so angry that they run for office outside of our salon system, threatening the balance and stability of our government it currently enjoys. For starters, developing the economy, maintaining political stability, and improving our army are paired up for our administration's success. Our idealism can only take us so far. The great Republican experiment is in a survivable but challenging position. We must do what it takes to keep it alive. That being said, if we are utterly if we utterly sacrifice our ideals, will any of our work have been worth it? The Republic carries on. We'll see what happens. Woo! You get political power gain. I like that. Oh my goodness. This is pretty normal stuff. Oh, do we get the GDP? Oh, we do get the GDP modifier effect. Okay, cool, whatever. The Outsiders Act. What does this do? It increases idealism and decreases political outsiders. Extreme amount of political outsiders. Ooh, that is not good. Interest rates on our debts will increase. Oh my. What? Mm, no, I can't do that. 
Mm. Promote the elites. Sorry, I'm drinking some water here as well. We lose stability. Increases political outsiders. Increases idealism, though. Oh, this is going to be a tightrope that we got to walk on. Oh, my goodness. Flexible elector requirements. Decrease. Ooh, increases voting turnout. Not bad, not bad. You do lose some of that, but you greatly decrease humanist popularity. Oh. Recruit best outsiders. Decrease outs political outsiders. We could probably want to do that. Interest rates, you know, so be it, whatever. How's this looking? We have... Oh, oh, no, 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 Oh, that was not a good idea, but oh my goodness, look at that. That's so high. But then again, our debt is zero for now, but whatever. Regardless, end of the revolt. In the end, victory in the field had broken the back of the famed Siberian Black Army. The anarchist soldiers had fought long and hard. When the situation grew impossible, however, the SBI had lost men as fast as melting spring snow. The Tomskian offensive, combined with the Shapshnikov's suggested land reforms and food delivery, had done much to peel away communes from the Black Army. The surrender of General Stepanov and his men rendered the Black Army remnants into determined insurrection. Tomsk's general urged the men on isolating hostile communes and slowly forming a grid of pacified territory within the region. The capture of Councilor Krasnopevtev was the Republican Army's highest priority, a culmination to the final campaign to eradicate anarchist ideology. The dedicated anarchist ideologue remained defined to the end, unwilling, unwilling to accept the offer of amnesty. Krasnopevtev died with his last companions, cornered in a forest safe house in the north. The men and women fought to the last bullet, refusing to grant the Republican foes any legitimacy. The martyrdom of Krasnopevtev echoed through the former free territory, and for a moment it seemed the insurrection might be sparked anew. But as loved as the council had been, the common throughout the region were exhausted by a decade of conflict. The Republican army took care to listen to their grievances and brought food for the poorest. Perhaps their leader would have cast his judgment on them for willingly accepting servitude to the invading state. The peasants hoped the councilor would have found him in himself the strength to forgive them. In general Stepanov's trial is due to begin soon. He is expected to argue that he merely wanted to protect the local citizens from endless violence, as did all other captured separatists in Tomsk. Rumors abound of a reduced sentence meant to reward him for agreeing to the end of bloodshed and give back to the eastern territories a sense of normalcy. The Republic forgives, but it does not forget. Ooh, we lost stability. Uh, Omsk? We might have to keep an eye on Omsk. I don't know if I really trust them over here. I don't know if I really trust them. Oh, we need so much political power. This is not going to be good. But we have a quarter million manpower. That's nice. Oh, elections. No, we lost one in the lower house. Are you kidding me? Bastelards. You bunch of bastelards. No, we're 27, 27, 27, 24. Are you kidding me? The coming storm. In the frenzy push to re uh, reunify Siberia and restore rightful dignity, a whisper has grown. As the light has gained purchase, so too has our shadow. Festering upon the inherent cruelty of our actions, it has waited for a moment to strike. Today, it emerged from the dark, boldly declaring, I was, I am, I will be you. Workers across the central Siberian industrial zones have begun a massive coordinated general strike, con setting continually poor conditions, unfulfilled promises, and unrepented cruelty by bosses. It appears that the drive to return to their civilization to the Russian waste has come with many drawbacks, as a lofty dream of a unified or united Russia has become less alluring when one cannot feed his family or keep all his limbs intact. Additionally, with the return of normalcy to the region, the worker himself seems to have become less valuable, simply a pawn towards the eventual goal. Already workers or work has grounded to a halt, demands are being made, and old scores are being settled. While some in our government may be sympathetic to the cause of the strikers, it is undeniable that we cannot tolerate a crippled economy, especially considering the ways or always precarious position of Russia. The strikers are numerous and militant. Unless we can come to some kind of deal and show our workers some tangible piece of the prosperity we promise, we must brace for the storm to come. We get general strikes, less efficiency gain, but we lose consumer goods factories, construction speed factory up at the eye wall. I'm not touching that. Nope. I am not going to touch that. We need to get as much political power as possible now. Oh, we lose political power. What? What? No, 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 no. Oh, this sucks. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, we have to do that so we can do get this more house support. Oh, my goodness. Seriously, guys, guys, come on. Just, just, just vote for me. Just vote for me. That's all we need. Just, just vote. Stronger armor. Empty weapons. Uh, steel caravans. Republican eagles. This is for m more military stuff. It looks like duty to the republic. Looks pretty good. A different path. Expanding politics. Humanist call for compassion. Discord in the salons. Subversive parties. And what's over here? The people's spring. I wanted to save this. Increases idealism. Our debt will rise a little bit. Four-year draft. Subsidize higher education. National debt will rise. Oh, the great clock. Hmm. Which health care? Freedom for independence? Subversive parties. I want to say this for last, because we won't get as much popularity in a district last, probably, so we can have the greatest effect. Integration Bureau. Ooh, ooh we can reduce administrative... Ooh, I want to reduce the administrative, administrative strain on our budget, or just on ourselves. Dealing with extremists... Oh, new friends in the salon. Resolve political crisis. Ah, oh, crap. We'll do this one first. Get stability, which we need. Political power. 
increase voting turnout. The Republic stands trumpet all over, over its former territories. Yet in this hour of victory, the Republic has perhaps never been more divided politically. And by the years of independence, separatists, former Silovolki, mutineers of Krasnoyarsk, and anarchists of the SBA all around, or all mill around, uncertain of the future and wary of the political system. Our innovative institution is limited in some aspects, with its strict emphasis on the four greatest salon. At the time, or at the same time, Pasternak's great constitution powers us to experiment and to try new things, to welcome new ways of doing things. A great Republican pro project is to endure. We must dare to dream even bigger and bigger dreams, and inspire ever greater amounts of people to believe in our ideals. The Republic must endure. The Common Core Reforms. Shapshnikov stacked the papers on his desk and leaned back. He had actually managed to get all four of the salons on board with his reforms somehow. As was the norm, a few backroom meetings, cups of tea, and IOUs were necessary to unite each salon under his ideas for the military. But at the very least, Shevchenkov acknowledged that they all had reasonably good military plans regardless of their ideological differences. The behind-the-scenes work was behind him now, but ahead came the actual task of a serious military reform. Shapshnikov was aware of the importance of his job as the core Republican army would serve as a foundation and bulwark of the Republic's defenses. Neither he nor the government could afford to let pesky squabbles hinder the modernization and reform of the military, lest everything he and the pe people of Central Siberia had worked for would be lost. At least we all agree on something. And oh my gosh! Holy crud! From Reds to Republicans. Oh, this is not good! The soldiers of the PRC had expected death or exile at the end of their lost war. Many were pleasantly surprised to find forgiveness from the Republican army. The PRC's higher-ups were tried in Tomsk. The prosecution against them was not as aggressive as it had been against defeated separatists. The men of the PRC had broken no laws of the CSR by staying true to their old allegiance, nor they had joined in the Yugoda's war of aggression to destroy the Republic. The prosecutors noted that the Red Army remnants were still illegally occupying land claims by the CSR. This did not warrant, however, treason tar charges as had been used before. The common soldiers and officers were offered to join the Republican Army. This was a tempting offer, offer to many. War was a craft, and the Republic seemed honorable men intent on helping Russia. Others found the humiliation of joining their enemies too much to bear. They fought for Vasilevsky, who now risked a lengthy prison sentence. They fought for communism, not the restoration of a shaky capitalist regime. The People's Revolutionary Council came to a bittersweet end, torn apart by the Republic's mercenary. Old comrades said goodbye to one another as half of the men gave up their swords, while the other half agreed to be deployed away from Mongolia. Many Mongolian soldiers vanished without a word into the border with Mongolia, seeking to continue their own fights. They would miss their Russian brothers in arms. For many, their war was over. Oh, uh, at least we're not losing political power, but oh, this sucks. Oh my goodness. Oh, the, the, that too? Oh, well, hmm. Why must you hurt me so? Oh, now we get the strikes. God. Mm. We can't do this either, and I guess we can't steal treasure from anyone else now, which kind of sucks. Regional integration. That. Oh, yeah, we can't do that either. Oh, my goodness. And we were doing so well. Becoming the Commonwealth of Siberia might not have been a good idea. The Iowa. This, uh, LBJ inaugurated. Okay. Can't need to promise, but can Johnson deliver? So. The severity of this general strike has expanded into entirely new dimensions. Following a lack of progress towards any kind of resolution and continuous violence, the workers have taken up arms. Raiding weapons stockpiles, looting old cellars, outright stealing has become widespread as arms and ammunition began to be passed around militants. Already workers are organizing themselves into general defense committees. This is an extremely dangerous situation, and the specter of uprising hangs in the air. We must tread more carefully than we ever have before, all while all the same time moving as quickly as possible to secure ourselves. If we do not act, this could be the end of all things. Ah, oh, crap. Karaznoyarsk has become... Demilitarize. God dang it. Come on. I'm just trying to help everyone out here. We can't do any of this yet, which really sucks. We have to do managing development. We gotta do political philosophy stuff to get some more idealism and more political outsiders. Or no political outsiders, I mean. But we also have to do that. So we are stuck between a rock and a hard place right now. The call for uprising comrades, unlike the, the a-holes that run Siberia, I will not lie to you. The truth of is is simple. It's so simple I don't need any fancy language to explain it to you. It is a truth that any Russian child knows. There's something wrong with those that lead. You all know the kind of men I'm talking about. Those that promise safety, promise... Prosperity promise. Uh, what, do, what do they not promise? They've been doing it ever since before the Great Patriotic War. Now when our country lies in ruin, and our people scourge in the dirt, what actions do they just take? They promise. I, for one, am sick of promises, sick of the lies, and of barbarianism. So right here, right now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not your leader. I never intend to be. I am a simple man, as you are, who wishes to be for the cruelty to stop. I, we have an opportunity now to forge a new Russia, one where each man is truly equal, one without leaders to get it. We will have to fight. However, the men of Central Siberia have nothing to lose. It is we who keep the production flowing. Us who ensures their bullets, bread, and steel arrive on time. In the name of all the dread dead of dead children, all the widows, the crippled sons, to hell with their promises. Um, you, you know, you know what? Just in case, I'm not really sure what's going to happen here. So let's let's, let's just do a, a simple fallback line, like over here, something like that. Just to be ready. But happy 1965, my friends. It's going to be an interesting year, to say the least. A very, very interesting year. Can I invest more in my construction? I'd like to do that. Hey, we expanded politics. Great. 
So now let's come over here and do the people's spring. It is not beautiful. What have we achieved? A government beholden to the people in support of the common worker, managing to carve out a place in central Siberia. Yet years ago, such a thing would have been treated as no more than a mere, fa mere fantasy. A pipe dream dreamt up in the ivory towers of Tomsk by the intellectuals with knowledge of the real world. Yet, here we stand today, and we would proudly say that we are citizens of a free republic in Russia. Many of our citizens blood for this achievement, and many more will surely die in the coming wars to reunite Russia. However, at least for a moment, our people are witnessing a Russian spring blooming in Siberia. Increases humanist popularity in a district. Cool. Still not enough. Oh, man, we did lose some more support. That sucks. Sucks, sucks. We need some more support here. Oh, 55% turnout, though. It's not bad. 45% Kamarovo. Not bad, not bad. Pretty close down there as well, so. Six days. All right. Get... Oh, the motorist is pretty slow. All right. Can you all just calm down? For the love of God, calm down. We have no authority. The revolt of Krasnoyarsk. Distressing news have been filled from Krasnoyarsk. The few army units still residing in the city have been reported that they once struck workers have turned violent and have occupied the streets of Krasnoyarsk in open revolt. As we speak, armories in K, or the K city, are being looted other weaponry with heavy fighting raging, raging in the city. Thankfully, while indeed roaring, the workers participating in this revolt seem to be woefully unprepared for a revolution and support for the revolt is limited to the city itself. Regardless, these revolting workers control a large industry and population center in Krasnoyarsk. If we do not deal with the situation at hand soon, the flickering embers of revolution may become a roaring fire. Let's get the same technology to come over, make it core. Oh, to hell with you guys. Are you kidding me? I liberated you guys. Just to get treated like this crap? Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to crush you with extreme prejudice right now. You're going to go in and you're going to just kill every single one of these god darn bastards. No, no, no. A thousand million times no. You can all rot in hell. Shostakovich wanted to provide a good society for everyone here. And this is what, this is what we get? This is what we get? No. 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 I'm not going to deal with this. You're all going to die here. Actually, before we kill them off, we have half a billion in debt. That's that's already really not good. Arise, you workers from your slumbers. Colston is going to die like crazy. But maybe I should play with him someday. Hmm. Keep him busy here. Looks like we're winning so far. That's actually pretty good. You're going to go there. Help support the attack. And we were waiting for a while. I need you to help kill them off. Kill every single one of these god darn pieces of garbage off. I need 60 political power. Good, good, get, move, 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 move. I don't care if it's over river. Kill them all. Seriously, just kill them all. They, they, they don't deserve peace. After everything we've done, every single god dang thing we've done, they still revolt. Are you kidding me? Point two? Ah, not bad. Go and destroy that division. Hey, we killed them in there, too. Bunch of scum. We try to help them out, and then they do they pull that on us. No, 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 no. Happy 65, though. Like I said earlier. Let's grab some civilian construction. Three. And the revolt has been put down. We should try all the traitors that way. Try every single one of them. Can we do that? Please let me do that. I want to do that so badly. Uh, anything here? Acquired territories? Nope. Regional development? I don't think so. It's pretty normal stuff. Uh, managing development? Reunification? I doubt it. Let's see. Over here. We could do stuff down there, but I just have to get... I have to do this. It's all a humanist role. Rule. That'd be good. And let us do what next? To the victors? That will rise a little bit. Increase idealism? We could probably do that, because I want to get through this as fast as possible. So, the Great Labor Conference. The Great Labor Conference is upon us. Citizens, young and old, are invited to take part in the grand meeting of the workers, industrials, capitalists, and more. The discussion will be varied, covering topics such as implementation of new technologies and labor practices in, industri in, in industry, the extent of government involvement in the economy, privatization of certain nationalized government assets, and the direction and focus of the national economy going forward. All are encouraged to come and impart their opinions and feelings on these most important discussions. Well, we definitely were not expecting a lot of that, but at least I was expecting that to happen. Comey looks like they're doing really well. And who are they led by? Uh, Alexander... Cosigen. Okay, cool. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we'll try to make the Commonwealth of Siberia pretty darn great. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.